If you weren't here last week, you will hear the sound of winning. Is the band ready for the sound of winning? Is, is the choir ready for the sound of winning? All right. Well, today, we're going to be talking about the fact that worship is a well. Somebody say worship is a well. Worship is a well. Turn in your Bibles to John chapter 4, verse 10. John chapter 4, verse 10. Jesus, uh, he was heading somewhere with his disciples. He said, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to rest. You guys go ahead. Go ahead. Just take care of some business and come back. Jesus sat down at a well and he sat down beside a Samaritan woman. And at that well, he asked the Samaritan, give me something to drink. And she said, why are you asking me for something to drink? You are, you're not a Samaritan. You know, you're a Jew. You don't come from here. You're a man. Why are you asking me for something to drink? Why are you asking me for something to drink? Why don't you get me something to drink? All right? It's not a typical, that would be a typical response of a modern day woman. Why are you asking me? All right? Why well, you don't get something? Get your own a drink. Right? John chapter 4 verse 10. But Jesus answered her and said, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that, who it's saying to you, give me a drink, you would ask him and then he would give you living water. Somebody say living water. Just so you know, the opposite of living water is dead water. Right? The opposite of living water is stagnant Water is water that's not good to drink. Jesus is saying, if you ask me, I'll give you the good water. I'll give you the good stuff. My water will give you life. You will come alive in my water. Jesus says, if you ask me, I'll give you living water. Amen. Verse 11. Then the woman said to him, sir, but you don't have no bucket. And this well is deep. So, you know, where are you going to get this living water? Verse 12. Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob who dug this well? And his sons and flocks, all of them who drank from it. Are you greater than them? Because you're talking a lot over here, guy. Uh, Jesus, I've heard of you. Right? She's saying, you're talking a lot. You're saying you're going to give me water, but you don't have no bucket. How are you going to do that? Right? Verse 13, Jesus said, everybody who drinks from this water, they are going to be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them, they will never ever thirst. The water that I give will become in them a spring of water. Somebody say a spring. It will become a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. Ladies and gentlemen, just so you know, the opposite of a spring is a dry well. The opposite of a spring is a dry place. Jesus is saying, I'm not a dry place. I will give you a spring. A spring that's going to well up inside of you. It's going to be bubbling over. It's going to be gushing out. Unto eternal life. What I'm going to give you is eternal. It is everlasting. It is not temporal. It will quench your thirst. And she says, well, sir, well, give me that water then so I don't have to be thirsty. Or I don't have to keep coming back here to draw water. Jesus thinks to himself, well, she's still thinking in the natural. She's still thinking of actual water. She's still thinking about H2O, ladies and gentlemen. How many of you know Jesus wasn't talking about H2O? He was talking about something else. Right? So he goes deeper and he says to her, I'm going to go deep, deep, deep now. I'm going to catch her in her side. Right? And he says, uh, verse 16 says, Jesus says to her, go and call your husband and come back. She said, um, well, the woman said, I don't really have a husband, you know. Jesus says, you're right in that you don't have no husbands. You don't have a husband. Uh, verse 18, for you have had five husbands. Somebody said five. Right? That's a lot of husbands. It's a lot of divorces. Uh, you know. Uh, and the one, the man that you have right now, he's not even your husband. Jesus. Uh, what you have said is true. You say you don't have a husband. You, you really don't have a husband. You've had husbands. But you don't have a husband now. She said, I can see that you're a prophet. You must be a prophet because you're seeing. You're a seer. You, you, you've, 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 you've you're seeing clearly and stating what I've been through. You just went kind of deep on me, Jesus. You went deep, right? You went low. You went below the belt on that one. So, okay. Well, tell me how your well is, is, works then. If, it, if, if you're going to go that deep, and if you're saying you have, you have a well, and if you want me to get my mind off of H2O, tell me then how your well works, this well that's going to give me everlasting life. Tell me how your well works because she says, verse 20, our, our ancestors worshipped on this mountain. But you say that the place where uh, your people must worship is in Jerusalem. You see, the Samaritans worshipped over here. They were half-breed Jews, right? Uh, and 
the, the, the Jews, they worshipped in Jerusalem. And they would always argue with each other and say, no, the right place to worship is over here. And the right way to worship is like this. The right way to drink from the well of God is in Jerusalem. I'm going to be honest now what I'm saying. Verse 21, Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, they're always coming. When you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. 22, you worship what you don't know, but we worship what we know, for salvation comes for the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. Somebody says spirit and truth. Verse 24, God is spirit and anybody who says they are going to worship him or follow him, bow down to him. They must worship him in spirit and in truth. Jesus sat down at the well because he, you know, he wanted to offer this woman the real well. And, and after having a conversation with her, he saw what was going on in her life. And he saw that all of her life she was drinking from the wrong well. Right? She was either drinking dead water or just drinking from a dry well. And he went really, really deep. And to point it out, he just, he just went to uh, relationships and, just say, and he just said, basically, you know, to, to give you an example, your relationships are, are, thrown, are, are way off. The way you relate to people. And you've been drinking from dry wells in relationships. You've been seeking something. You've been going after something in relationships that you'll never find. Is There are a lot of guys you went through. Right? I mean... The, the first one you had, the first one you got, I mean, he was, he was a popular guy. And what you got from him was status. And you worshipped there for a while, right? Because you had on the ring, and you would hold his hand, and you would go out, and, and, and you would say, wife, me other wife, right? And me come first, right? And you would worship, and you would say, all them attack, make them fret. And you thought that. You and your man now left. Because you are his first choice. You are his first price. And you would walk and worship and you would jump and shock out because you were the wife. And you thought that you could, you thought that you would be satisfied by status. But it, it clipped you. And you stopped liking him so you say. Uh, so you left him, you met another guy, or he left you, uh, and you met another guy, and, and, and this guy made you feel good, right? This guy just, he really made you feel good about yourself, he made you feel pretty, right? And you worshipped there for a while, and, and you sang a different song, you said, you make me feel like a natural. And you worshipped there for a while, but after a while you said, but... but I don't really, I can make myself feel like a natural woman all by myself. Uh, and he said, I don't need no man to make me feel like a natural woman. Right? So you left this guy. You weren't satisfied there in the natural. So he said, uh, you, you, you said no, I need to think more about myself. I need to think. Uh, and, and you said, you know what? The truth is, there, there's, 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 there's no romance without finance and and nothing plus nothing leaves nothing. And you got to have something if you want to be with me. Because the truth is life is much too serious. And love is very mysterious. And, and a fly girl like me needs security. And you, 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 you made yourself worship at the well of security. Because ain't nothing going on but the rent. He said, I need, I need security. And you drank from that well for a little while. How many of you know what I'm talking about? And he said, well, uh, you know, the money run out. And, or I'm stopped giving money. And you left him and then you moved on. And you found a guy that made your body feel good. Right? Right, women? Uh-uh. And you found a man that makes your body feel queasy and makes you feel good. And the chemistry is right. And he said, if loving him is wrong, I, I, don't, want, I don't even want to be right. 
And you drank from that well of physical satisfaction. And then you end up with a, a man that goes to church. And the, 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 the guy goes to church, but him don't want to marry you. And you have a man now that, 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 that doesn't want to marry you. You have a man that don't want to marry you. Isn't that what Jesus, Jesus said? You have a man now, but he doesn't even really want to marry you. And you're still searching for satisfaction in him. And you're not going to get it. Jesus says, but I have a well that if you drink from this well, you will be satisfied. I have a well that will give you all you ever needed. I have a well that will spring up inside of you and give you living water. All of what you are trying to get from men, all of what you're running after from man, all of those songs you've been singing, all the worship you've been worshiping at those wells, they will never satisfy you. I have what you need. Jesus says, I have what you need. I have all that you need. You need to come and drink at my well. And it's very interesting that we do the same thing. Many of us live our lives drinking dead water. Many of us live our lives drinking from dry wells. What well are you drinking from nowadays? I mean, what song are you singing? What, what, what well are you drinking from? Some of you are, are saying, you know, well, well I, I put my all into my family. Everything is family. Right? I give, everything, I give everything to my husband and in that relationship and every, this dream of having a family, I've been running it down. But, but after a while, family gets kind of crazy. After a while, people, you, you realize that people are imperfect and this is not a dream. This is not a movie. And there's, there's really no, there is really not that everlasting satisfaction in family. And in relationships with imperfect people and then we say, well, let me run down my career, and we, we shift our well over to our careers. So we say, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to climb this ladder. And we worship at the altar of our career. And we say, well, it's God's purpose, and that must come first. And we bow down every day to our bosses and to our customers. And we're trying to achieve this thing in the workplace, and we're in this rat race. And we become the, the, the big rat in the rat race and still not happy. Some of you, you know, you're not happy at that well. Relationships and career and some of us have shifted. Some of us, you know, we, we, we find satisfaction in food and in alcohol. And you say, well, maybe I can drink from this well. Because it, it makes me feel good. I like to eat. I really like food. It makes me happy when I think about eating and it makes me happy when I eat. Until after. So I don't feel so happy anymore. Right? And you drink. Because it soothes, it soothes your pain. And you find yourself caught up drinking from uh, dry wells and drinking what? Dead water. God is asking you today, what are you drinking from? Are you sure that you have pulled yourself up to the right well? Are you sure that you've settled down at the right well? Because Jesus is saying that only at my well will you be truly satisfied. It's time for you to grow out of those dry wells. It's time for you to realize this thing is dead water. It's, it's the same thing over and over and over again. It's not everlasting. God is talking to somebody in here today who's been drinking. Your belly full of stagnant water. And a belly ache is coming. A heartache is right around the corner. God is saying, Jesus said to her, that my well is where you must be. Ladies and gentlemen, a well is your source. Many of you have gathered that. A, a well is your source. A, a well is a place that you go to. A well is a place that you feed from. A well is that thing that you worship. Your well, the well in your life, is the thing that you worship the most. It's the thing that you praise and bow down to. The thing that you spend your most time doing. Most of your energy goes into this thing. Your well is what you worship. Turn to somebody and say, worship is a well. And Jesus wants you to worship what is spirit and what is truth. If you want to thirst no more, you have to worship what is spirit and truth. How many of you know that you're spirit? How many of you know that you need the truth? I was watching this... Uh, like a, a segment in a movie. And what it had was this, this uh, a car was parked up on the side of the road. It was one of those luxury fast cars. And it had 
butterfly, butterfly doors means the doors are open like this. It was like a Lamborghini or one of them fast cars. And the, 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 the hood was popped and there was a, a blonde, you know, had her head in, the, in the, the, the hood of the car, looking at the engine, right, in her short shorts. And she was in there, it was her car. And she was, and she was fooling around in there, trying to fix the car because the car had broken down on the side of the road, right? And she's there, and it didn't take much time for a man to pull up in all of his chivalry and, and pull up and say, how can I help you, ma'am? You know, what seems to be the problem? And she says, well, my car is, my car is sick. My car is broke. You know, she said, I tried everything. I tried to turn it on. I kind of, car is broke. I can't, I've done everything. I can't, can't do it. And the guy just said, oh, ma'am, step away from the car. Right? Step away from the car. You may hurt yourself. Right? And he said, step away. She stepped away from the car. And she stood up. And he went over. And he looked in. And he walked on. He checked the fluids. And he walked on. And he started to laugh. And he went up to her and said, uh, ma'am, uh, you know, cry no more. You know, you don't have to cry. Right? Your car is not sick. Your car is not broke. Your car is just on E. She's like, what, what's, what's E? You know? <laughs> Your car is sick. Your car is not sick, sorry. Your car is not broke. Your car is just empty. I believe what God is saying to many of us is that you may not be sick. You may just be on E. There are many of us, God is saying to, to you today, that you're not suffering from depression. You're just empty. You're not under a curse. You're just on E. You, you understand what I'm saying? I, I'm, I, I'm saying you're not being punished by God. Uh, right? You're just empty. Right? The devil is not just after you. The devil is always on me. Right? You're blaming the devil for everything. and saying, no, you, you are just on E. God is saying to many of you today, you are not sick. You're not broke. You're just empty. The reason you're sad and angry and distressed and confused in your life all the time is because you are empty. And you need to pull up at the right well and drink what God has for you. That thing that's going to fill you up. Some of you just need to get a fill up. Some of you just need to pull up and fill up. Let me explain something to you. How many of you know that, that when a baby is born, it's about 75% water, right? I think my baby, my new baby, uh, my, my daughter, she's about 90% water. She's so cushy and she's so sweet. But as we grow up, men, uh, we are about 60 to 65% water, right? Uh, the leaner you are, the more water you have. Very interesting. A woman, you are about 50 to 55% water. The more cushy you are, actually, it... Uh, and because, because you are made up of water, it means that you need water, right? And you will not be healthy, you will not be strong, you won't be happy unless you have water. You are made of water. And unless you're getting enough water, you're going to be sick. You're not going to feel right. Right, so, so a lot of people, what they do is they, they just live dehydrated. Right? And, and every glass of water that they drink, what they're actually trying to do is to catch up uh, with trying to hydrate themselves. Let's say you must drink eight glasses of eight, eight ounce cups of water a day. And some of you are not doing that. So when you're drinking, all you're, trying, all you're really doing is recovering. Some of you are just in recovery. Your body has never been in a place of overflow with water before. I don't know why you're so afraid to drink water. You need to be drinking some water. Well, check this out now. How many of you know that when a baby is born, the baby is 100% spirit? And as you grow older, men, you are 100% spirit. And women, you are 100% spirit. Some of you are more. Right? And what that means is that if you are not filling yourself up with spiritual stuff, if you're not filling yourself up with spiritual stuff that is true, you are going to live sick. And some of you worship so seldomly, some of you pull up to God's well so seldomly that you are always in recovery. You have never, ever felt what it feels like to be, feels like to be overflowing. You've not, you don't know what it feels like to have the right amount of water in your life. The right amount of spirit and truth in your life. 
you are just living spiritually dehydrated. So many people. Somebody say, I am 100% spirit. You need spirit. You need to fill yourself up with spirit and truth. God is saying to you today, do you want to be full? Because I have a well that can fill you. Look at somebody and say, worship is a well. I think God really just wants to know today, do you, do, do you really want to be, to be well? Do you really want to be healed? Check this out. Let's read a verse. I just have two more stories for you. Three more stories and then we'll go. Right? Uh, in John chapter 5, go, turn to John chapter 5. We'll start at verse 5. Here's the situation. There was a place Jesus and his disciples were going to. And uh, it was near a place called the Sheep's Gate. The gate where they used to deal with sheep. Right? Obviously. Right? And there was a pool there. And at that pool, what would happen is that there were, there were hundreds of, of, of um, invalids and lame and disabled persons there. Persons that were blind, you know, deaf, dumb, uh, no hands, no feet, couldn't see. You know, these kind of things. And there were a lot of people that were sick. And they, would, they, they were there because it is said that almost once a day or maybe more, right, an angel would come down, the Spirit of God would come down to that water, to that well, to that spring, and he would stir the waters, right? The angel would stir the waters, and it is said that the first person that jumped into the river will get healed. The first person that jumped in to that water would be healed. So Jesus, he comes over there, and he says, this is interesting, uh, right? Uh, we know that it worked because there were so many people there, right? They were there, and they were waiting on their turn. They were there trying to get their turn. John chapter 5, verse 5. One that was there had been an invalid for 38 years. I wonder if you don't read 38 yet. That's a long time, right? Verse 6. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time. Somebody said, long, long, long time. He asked him a very powerful question. He said, do you want to get well? Can you imagine the look on this guy's face? Can you imagine everybody thinking, why is he asking him that question? So the guy says, sir, uh, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. The guy says, I don't have no foot. Right? Uh, while I'm trying to get in, somebody else always goes down ahead of me. And, and I'm, I'm watching this, I'm, I'm reading this, and I'm, and I'm thinking, this, this, it seems like an insulting question. It seems like a very uh, insensitive question to ask a man in this condition, do you want to be well? But Jesus is saying, I'm not trying to be rude, right? I'm trying to actually be polite, right? He said, I have the power to heal in me, and I just want to know, do you really want to be healed? Because I heard that you've been here for a long time. 38 years you've been here. So, so I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just asking. Right? You, you've been in that situation for such a long time. Somebody said 38 years. Right? And Jesus is saying that's, that, that's 14,000 days. That's 14,000 days you've been, you've been here, sitting down here. So what that means, Jesus is saying, is that 14,000 times someone else beat you into the water. I'm, just, I'm not trying to be rude. But you've been here for a long time. I have to ask, do you really want to be healed? Because every time somebody has beaten into the water, you know, uh, you know I, 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 it, there is something, I believe, about how this guy was sitting that made Jesus have to ask, do you really want to be healed? There's something about how he was sitting. I mean, maybe he just looked too comfortable. Maybe he didn't have this look on his face like, I want to be healed. You know how many of you know there's a look that somebody has when they really want to be healed? Right? How many of you know that there is a look that comfort has and there is a whole nother look that desperation has? Yes. Right? There is a look that comfort has and there is a look of somebody that is desperate to break through what they've been going through. And Jesus said, I don't know. I mean, I'm looking at you. Right? There's something about how this guy was looking that made Jesus have to ask, do you really want to be healed? There, there, there must have been something about where this guy was sitting that, that made Jesus say, do you really want to be healed? I mean, it, because, I mean, 
the, the well is over there. And you're over here. I mean, I'm just saying, I mean, do you really want to be healed? Because uh, if I was you, I would be right at the edge. I would have my big toe in the water, to be honest. Right? I would hitch up on the edge of that thing. I mean, somebody that is desperate doesn't, doesn't sit at the back. If the answer is in the front. I learned that when I went to do my master's. Right? When I decided I wasn't going to be a dummy anymore, that I'm going to be smart and start hanging out with the smart people, I discovered that all the smart people are down the front. Uh, where the teacher is. <laughs> and I always used to say, well, I can hear them in the back. The reason I used to go in the back is because them can't hear me. <laughs> There's a reason why the dummies are going in the back of, of a classroom, not really church, but I'm just saying. Uh, the anointing is down front, then go down the front. I discovered when I was in school the second time around, right, that if, if, if I was really desperate to learn, I needed to go down to the front. There was something about where this guy was sitting. There's something about how this guy was sitting that made Jesus say, I'm not trying to be rude. Uh, I, have a, I have healing power in me, and I just want to know, do you really want to be healed? Because I can't tell that you're desperate. If I could tell that you're desperate, then I wouldn't even have to ask you. I'll just pick you up and just throw you in the water and just stir the water up myself. How many of you understand what I'm saying? I'm here to tell you that it is desperation that unlocks all of what God has for you in his water. Your laziness can't unlock what God has for you. Passivity can't unlock what God has for you. You, you in your comfort can't unlock. And, and I don't know if it makes sense for you to come to church every week and just sit down in the environment. I mean, it, it doesn't make any sense just sitting down in the environment, waiting for the water to be stirred up, saying, well, maybe I'll get touched today. Desperation has a whole look all by itself. Or maybe you understand what I'm saying. Let, let me tell you what a, a desperate person, a desperate person says, if the spirit, just if the spirit is going to be stirring, I'm going to make sure that I'm there. In other words, church now miss me. No, there's no worship going to miss me. Right? No, I'm going to tell my boss. No, 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 no. You don't have what I need. I'm tired of drinking at your well. Right? There's no spirit stirring up by, by, by you, boss. How many of you have the spirit stirring up at work? No. Then why are you running to work on, on, a, on a day when there is a gathering to worship? Say, so no, no, no. I am not missing the stirring of the spirit at my church. So I need to say, you know what? No, I can't go. There is no spirit stirring at the beach. The last time I checked, there was no, the waters of Lime Key weren't stirring. <laughs> Puerto Seco. Eh, Puerto Seco, yeah. It looked like it's stirring, but it, it, you, you can jump in there all you want. You're not going to get healed. I'm just saying, so, somebody that's desperate says that church not missing me. Somebody that's desperate says, I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to be there early. Nobody is going to jump into them waters before me. I'm going to be early for church. I'm going to be ready for the well. I'm going to be ready for the stirring. I'm going to come ready to worship. You can't walk in while it's stirring and expect to get in on this thing. You can't do that. Unless you just don't really want to be healed. See, some people, you really just don't want to be healed enough. I mean, you want to be healed, but just not enough. Right? You want to be made well, but just not enough. So you're living dehydrated. You're living with less. You're living sick. You're living coming in and getting the what left in worship. You come in getting the what left and you're always living a life recovering from and trying to catch up to what could be for you. And God is saying today, listen, I am a well and I need you to conjure up some desperation. I need you to move a little bit closer to this well. I need you to show me that you're desperate because I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is going to whisper in your ear, do you really want to be healed? Because I'm not sure. Jesus should never have to ask you that question. You need to be saying, listen, if, if only one person going to get blessed at church, that's going to be me. Because nobody's going to out-worship me Nobody's going to out-sing me. 
Nobody's going to outdance me. How many of you can say that? That if God has a blessing for one person today in church, is me going to get it? Or, or maybe you don't really want the blessing that much. I don't know. Uh, you know, do you want him to, do you want a well to spring up in you or not? Spring up a well. Spring up a well. Spring up a well in me. Nothing can stop this joy. We're dancing in the street. Spring up a well. Spring up a well. Spring up a well in me. I don't know how you can sing that song. Spring up a well. Spring up a well in me. You can, you can. Spring up a well in me. You understand? Anyway, that's for just a few minutes until we just have a few minutes till you can prove to God how desperate you are. Turn in your Bibles to 2 Kings chapter 5. It's, it's time to worship. It's time to worship. How many of you are ready to worship? You're not sure yet? God, not sure yet how serious you are. Let's see. 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 9. So Naaman went with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elijah's house. Naaman was a, a wealthy man. Naaman was the, the, the captain of the army. All right? And uh, Naaman just had one problem that he, he had leprosy. His, his, his body was covered in sores and boils and he had leprosy. Right? And he wanted to be healed. So he stopped off at Elisha's house first. Then Elisha sent a message to him and said, Go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan and your flesh will be restored and you will be clean. But Naaman went away angry and cross and said, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord, his God, and wave his hand over the spot and cure me with leprosy. How many of you can see what this guy is saying? Right? Uh, he, he, he's upset. He's vexed. Um, verse 12. Are not Abano and Farapa, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters in Israel? Why won't we go all the way down there? Couldn't I wash them, wash in them and be cleansed there? So he turned and he went off. Somebody say cross. Angry. He's a rebel. What Naaman was saying is, listen, I need healing. But, but guess what? I choose how I will be healed. I tell the healer how to heal me. It's, it's so interesting how many people step into the presence of the healer with pride. Body covered with sores. Issues that you can't, can't handle. You say, no, I, I say how I will be healed. I'm a wealthy man. I've accomplished much. I am a fighter. Listen to me, O oh healer. I rather go in one of them river there. I don't like that river. Send me to that river. Right? Uh, verse 13. Naaman's servant went to him and said, My father, right? If the prophet had told you to do some big thing, right? Wouldn't you have done it? Because it's a big thing you didn't want to do. Right? I mean, you want, you want some kind of big, super spiritual thing. Right? You want some kind of complicated, extravagant thing to happen so you can get your healing. Right? You want a formula. You want, you want, you want to say 10 Hail Marys or something. You, just, you want something concrete. You want to pay money. Say, just tell me how much to pay. I mean, you would have done that. Right? How much more then when he tells you, just go wash and be clean. In other words, he's just telling you to simply jump in the water. The man of God is not giving you some complicated instruction right, uh, that your heart is longing for, that you would prefer, or that would be comfortable, or that would be extravagant enough for you. He's saying the answer is simple. Why don't you just receive the simple answer? It, the answer is simply just jump in. Just jump in the water. So verse 14, if you know the story. So he went down and dipped himself into the Jordan seven times as the man of God told him. And his flesh was restored and became clean like that. 
of a young boy. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to declare today that what you need, you will receive if you follow some very simple or a very simple instruction today. God is saying that worship is the well that you must drink from. And that if you would just jump into worship, if you just let yourself go in worship, if you would give all of what you have in worship, then I will heal you. I will fill you. Jesus said, if you drink from my well, you will have wells and springs of water welling up inside of you. I mean, the instructions are easy. Just come to church early. Prepare yourself. Dress, dress, dress like you want to worship. Right? And, and, and just come and, and, and if, the, if the person singing says, these are the words we're singing, just sing those words. Don't go on like you don't know the words. Because the words are right there. Right? And if he says, uh, lift your hands to heaven, just lift your hands to heaven. And if he says, oh, clap your hands with me. It could be a part of the song. Just do it. It's simple. Your answer is not in the complicated. It's in the simple. But is it that you have a preference? Is it, is it that you know of another way that you want to be healed? You, you, you've come to church with a whole different idea of how you should be healed. God is saying, well, listen, I have a simple instruction for you. You can follow my instructions or you can wait on yours. I just want to finish with this. It's one of my favorite stories. Some of you have heard it before. Most of you haven't. I was in a store, and the owner of the store rec recognized me. She was a, a, a lady, um, you know, a little bit older than middle age. And um, she said, Morgan, you know, and I said, yes, right? She says, you're Peter Morgan's son, right? And uh, she's a very, um, very wealthy woman, uh, comes from one of those very wealthy families in Jamaica. And she said, Morgan, you're, you're Christopher Morgan? And I said, yes, I am. <laughs> right? And she said, let me tell you. Let me tell you, your father is just a great man of God, great man of God. And she said, wonderful. I said, well, well what are you doing back at? Well, I'm, you know, I'm back in Jamaica. I'm pastor. She says, wonderful. She says, let me tell you a story. Let me tell you a story. Right? She says, one day, you remember when your father had the tents, and he had the tents, and people would go to the tent, right? She said, I went to one of those tent meetings, you know, and my husband didn't know I was there. Because my, my husband didn't take too much to me going to church like that, you know. So I, I, I took the kids out, you know, and I put them in the car, and we went to church. And I went to church, and your father was there, and he was preaching, and he did a call, and he preached about baptism, and he said, who wants to jump in the waters of baptism? And she says, Something inside of me just said, you need to jump in the water. She said, but I don't have no change of clothes. It's just me and the two kids. What am I going to do? Right? My husband is going to vex with me from here. I get baptized. And if he even knows, he's going to be upset with me. Right? What am I going to do? And she just heard a voice say, just, just jump in. Just jump into the water. Just, just do it. Right? And she said, okay, God, I'm going to do it. And in her same clothes as she did wear, go there. She put her kids in the car. She said, I locked my kids in the car. I cracked the windows a little bit, right? And I said, I'll soon come back, okay, darlings, right? And she ran off, and they had one of these temporary water things. And she said, I jumped in the water in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And they took me up, and I, and I felt the life of God in me, right? And I danced my way over to the car, and I realized, okay, well, how is this going to work now? Because I'm drenched, I'm soaked, right? I went up, how am I going to do this, right? Uh, and... She, she, she went from just alive to starting to worry just a little bit. Jumped into the car. Mommy, 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 why are you wet up? Why are you wet up? So the shh, nothing, nothing, right? You know, you know, there's some things your daddy just won't understand, so it's good if you guys just. And she's like, God, I need a miracle, right? God, please, when I get home, make my husband not be there. Give me that miracle, Lord God, just when I get home, pray that my husband, I pray that my husband's not there because if him see me, this is only about question and arguing. He's going to turn this thing all around and it's going to really be bad. God, please, I need a miracle. She cried out for a miracle. She said, God, you said jump in, you know. Right? And I jumped in. I know I'm soaking wet. Right? Uh, and she 
pulled into her big gate and it opened up and she drove in and she said, her husband, right at the door. She said, Lord have mercy. This is not good. So she went and she, her husband was over there. She parked on the other side and she said, God, I need a miracle. And she goes, so she says, as I opened the door and as I stepped out, she said, it just started to rain. Yeah. And she said, I jumped out the car and I stood up in the rain. And I said, wet me up, Jesus. Wet me up, Jesus. And she said, and I let the kids out of the car and I said, wet them up to Jesus. Everybody went up. And she said, hi, honey. Don't you see you're getting wet out here? You don't want to go inside. I'm going inside because I'm wet. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, God is saying today, all you have to do is jump in and miracles will happen for you. God is saying the miracles are waiting for you to jump in. Jesus is saying, will you pull up to my well? Hey, thank you so much for watching us here. Go for God Family Church on YouTube. Why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button to ensure that you get all of what is new from Go for God Family Church and to ensure that you don't miss anything.